Welcome to a new episode on my home automation open hammer node red playlist. In this video, I explain how I work with time series data, how I save them in a database and use the UI charts to display them. All this is in node red. As usual, links to the supporting documents and code examples are in the video description. This video is likely to be the first in a series on this topic. My node red setup is fairly, fairly recent. I have a few sensors feeding in data, but not a lot at the moment. I'm trying out the basics of the process and will most probably put more videos as I refine them. I will try to remember to come back here and put a link to the newer videos. To be honest, I only have two data sources. One is a Xiaomi Mi Flora soil humidity sensor, which gives me temperature, sunlight and soil moisture values every 15 minutes. And the other one is uh, my solar panel system on the on the top of my roof, which gives me the usual, usual like you know voltage, power output, and generation um, in every five minutes or so. Um, so these two sources are you know quite different in terms of the ranges, and um, and there is not much I can compare with between them. But still, it's good enough to set the, set up the basic processes and present them to you. What I want to do and what I want to cover in this video is how once you get the uh, the data from your inputs, how you store them in a database, how you use the, the UI um, chart component to display them and also store uh, these values and um, what to do with the data once you have started collecting it, how you uh, start getting rid of your old data and how you start aggregating your data. To store information, I decided to use uh, SQLite, um, which is a database um, system uh, that you can install on Raspberry Pi and on Linux. So it's an SQL database engine, and it's, um, as the name suggests, it's a very light uh, database engine. Uh, so that's probably very well suited for Raspberry Pi and uh, um, for low power machines. But again, it has some limitations. So um, I'm fairly new to this whole, you know, node red process. I'm trying to set up something to get something working. So I thought I would I would start with something simple. But if you have different needs or you have a lot of data to work with, most probably you should be looking at a different database engine, which can, you know, surely can handle more uh, data and also something more elaborate on the on the reporting and the presentation side as well. I would also like to tag, uh, thank the guys in the Node-RED forum who uh, have given me a lot of help in this topic. Um, so again, I got the whole recommendation to use SQLite and, and, the, and the dashboard uh, from the forum. But again, there have been other uh, people suggesting me to use different databases and different uh, visualization options. But again, I just started to go with a simple one for the time being. So if you want to um, know a little bit more information about this, maybe you can start reading uh, this uh, post. And also there should be a lot of other um, resources on the on the Internet as well. And if you read this one um, uh, uh, in one of the posts, you will you will be able to get some um, insights from chaps who've been using this system for um, for multiple years or months so and they have some ideas like uh, based on volume how much response you can expect from the system and they looked you know fairly good for me and that was again one more reason I decided to go for that um, to start with this SQLite you need to install it on your Raspberry Pi and again you just go on Google uh, to find uh, some blogs how to do that and to get it working with Node-RED there is also a Node-RED um, node for SQLite. So you need to use the NMP install node red node SQLite um, to get it on your setup. And once you have done it, then you should have a new node somewhere in the in this storage uh, group, which says SQLite. And um, it is really, really easy. Um, you need to pass a node in, uh, sorry, a message in in which in topic you specify the um, the SQL string and then you get the results in a payload. So it is really simple to use. Um, also, um, what you should be considering is you probably be needing some sort of tool to manage your database. Again, you can do it via the, uh, the node itself to create new databases, to create tables and everything. 
but probably it's easier to use something like this. I decided to use PHP Lite Admin. Again, you find some resources on, on the net how to install it. It's not really complicated. And this is web-based and it also runs on, the, on my Pi, which means that I've also needed to install Apache as a web server just to, to manage this. But uh, the way I'm using it at the moment is I'm always shutting the Apache down and when I need to make any changes to the database, I fire it up, I use the PI, uh, the admin and I shut it down again because I'm not using it for anything else. Um, one more thing about the, um, um, the um, SQLite is um, the SQLite uses just um, some files to store the database. So when you are creating a new, um, uh, in the SQLite config, you specify the folder where you want to create your databases. And whenever you create a new database, for example, I created this node red database, it is created as a file in the file system. So again, just read up the resources on the net, uh, just to make sure that these files have the sufficient uh, authorization. So your, um, database engine can read that. Um, to start with what I have done in the database level, I created a table which is called the sensor data. And the structure is really, really simple. So um, the first field is an ID field, which is um, my primary key and it's an auto increment field. Uh, so every time I create an item, uh, a record, the uh, the engine will just um, assign uh, an ID for it. And then I'm using a text field to, to say what's my device is. And then another text field, what's the sensor of that device is and the actual value in reals. So at the moment I'm, I'm storing like temperatures and humidities and other values. So they are all real values, but integer or real. So I'm using the real type and two additional fields. What is the epoch, which is going to contain the JavaScript time in milliseconds, and uh, also another one which uh, contains the more regular timestamp. And I'm actually using the database to, to default it to the current timestamp. And I'm not using this field for anything else, but I thought that uh, besides storing uh, the, you know, the, the millisecond time, uh, this could be useful as well. And to look at the data, uh, you can see that uh, at the moment I only have two devices. So the first one is the GrowWatt, which is the inverter, and it's giving me power voltage and the today, which is the um, generation today. And then I have this other one, which is the Mi Flora, which gives me battery, temp, battery, moisture, fertility, sunlight. Uh, so these are my devices and these are my sensors. And you can see the values here, the epochs, which is the non-human readable date time and the and the date time which is the more human readable date time that also helps me understand it just a little bit better if i'm getting the values if i'm you know if my sensors are working okay if i'm getting all the information i need uh, from them okay good um storing the data is relatively simple so if i take the the me flora example um I have covered this in a previous video. So the way I've, I've done this is um, um, I have a background job in, um, in, in, my, in my Pi, uh, which is getting the data from the sensor and then pushing the results into uh, over MQTT in JSON format. So um, I've already covered how I'm extracting the values from the JSON format. Uh, but basically what, uh, what I'm getting in the in the message, in the message payload, I'm getting dot temperature, sunlight, moisture, fertility, and battery. So what I've done doing here is for each of the values, I'm uh, constructing an SQL insert command. So insert into sensor data, devices sensor value epoch, and I'm plotting the values is uh, the device is me flora, the sensor is temp, the actual value is what I'm getting, and the epoch is. Um, is my current date time. So I'm using the, the get date uh, method of the JavaScript date time object to get the, uh, the current milliseconds. And um, what I found is 
if I put this multiple insert into separate by them by semicolon, only the first one gets executed. So the way to push multiple messages or multiple SQL uh, instructions to uh, the SQLite node is to put them into arrays. So I'm creating an empty array, I'm putting all these SQLs into uh, just an SQL string variable, and I use output push and um, well, again, I need to construct a um, an object where the topic is the is the SQL. So I'm doing this uh, five times because I have five values that I want to store and output. Yeah, yeah. and eventually I'm doing this return outputs. So um, I'm pushing this array out as an array um, and uh, this piece here is is just uh, for the status i've started using this uh, status command which gives me a a message on the on the editor when it was last executed so again it just gives me a visual feedback so i know that you know this service is running and i'm getting the values every 15 minutes so the current system time is uh, actually 604 and i got the last um, update at 600 so the, the job is definitely working. So um, I create this array of, of messages, each of them with, where the topic is the SQL, and I'm passing down to the Node-RED database node, and that, that that's it, that executes the SQL, and as you can see, I'm getting all these values, you know, Miflora temp, battery, moisture, blah, 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 updated in the database as a new record. And similarly to my Growbot um, solar panels, again, I'm getting all those three values, so the, the voltage, the power, and the total generation in, in an object. So I'm doing pretty much the same process here. I'm creating the SQL, insert SQL command for each of them. I'm constructing all of them into an array, and I'm pushing that array out to the output, which gets fed into the Node-RED database. One more comment on the uh, on on this uh, uh, the the node the database node or the SQL node uh, itself is if you are only passing one single select over you don't have to be that elaborate with the um, with the output array and then pushing the values into output simply just set message dot topic equals the um, select and then you just do the normal return message um, so that. You know this piece and the outputs is only required if you want the want your node to execute multiple SQLs at the same time. And by the way, when you do that, you are getting the results also in um, so the the output. So whenever you execute something in the message payload, you are getting the, uh, the the records that got, for example, selected or inserted at the output. So and if you have doing if you are inserting multiple SQLs, you're getting multiple outputs as well. Um, as I've covered in previous videos, anything which I want to, you know, show on the screen, so for example, from the from the solar panels, I want to show the uh, the power, so I can see which, you know, this, uh, this uh, curve pretty much corresponds to the sunlight. And um, all I'm doing is, um, uh, here, I mean, I covered this in previous video. I extract the, um, the you know, the, the actual power value. I'm putting into the UI uh, field to display, and I'm also pushing that data here into a chart. And in the chart, I just do, do the uh, usual setup. So I want the chart to display the last day of data, and then you know, getting rid of the old data is handled automatically by the chart. But Again, one, what happens if, for whatever reason, you need to restore the or you know shut down Node-RED and restart it? Then your UI would be empty until you get the first reading and then the second reading and then starts uh, building up the chart from that point onwards. But probably you um, you want to do you want some possibilities so the chart updates the latest state, which can be done with these few nodes, which you can see here. So first of all, you use the top output of the chart, and then you send it on to um, send it to a file. So I'm just I created the charts folder where I do all these dumps of my current chart state. Sorry, chart yeah chart states, and um, 
again just a simple file uh, you use this override file option uh, because you can find it in the documentation is the top node the first output contains an array of the charge state uh, which can be used um, which can be persisted if needed so again this output every time the chart is updated all the chart values getting saved in a file and you to restore that uh, it's really simple again um, put an inject node with an inject once a startup checked um, you read the same file that you have created and you just add the JSON node which again converts the um, the the output which is in uh, JSON into a JavaScript object because the the chart expects a JavaScript object and you put it in so um, uh, you define it as an input to the chart. So again, now your chart has two inputs. So this line is going to feed in uh, the data every time it receives a new one. And this is going to feed in the previous states when node that is restarted. And if you have multiple charts, you just have to repeat the same process over and over for each of them. Obviously make sure that you are creating a different uh, file for each of them. And, he, oh, sorry, and you are restoring from the same file. Otherwise your charts are going to be messed up. This is all nice and good and following this process your um, node ready is going to collect your data your charts are going to display your last day or last week or whatever you have defined of that data point and they will nicely restore themselves if you if you happen to restore uh, restart node red but um, I don't really know how many items I have oh I have 5,000 lines in this database and it's only running for about um, probably about two weeks and still I mean most of my data sources are um, you know every five or every 15 minutes uh, not to mention that um, uh, my solar panel is only uh, giving me data for about like you know at most eight uh, hours a day in this winter period so I don't have a huge amount of data but imagine you have a couple of temperature uh, nodes which give you temperature every t every minute uh, then this can really add up and not to mention that um, let's take the temperature for example I mean you probably want to see the temperature for the last week uh, in this sort of resolution or the uh, the power curve for the last week but anything beyond that or, or previous to those dates you don't really need I mean for example the power all you need is how much was the total generation for every single day or for temperatures what was the max temperature or the minimum temperature a day and then you can just forget the rest so the next thing is to somehow aggregate um, these time series data and um, for that um, I have created another database which is this, well, I call it sensor underscore AGGR for aggregate or aggregated. And the structure is again, fairly simple. Um, the first field is the epoch field, which is integer. The second is the device and the sensor and the value. So the last three is the same as before. And I'm making the first three fields as um, primary keys. So for a particular time in device and sensor, I only want one single value. Um, and to populate this, I'm using um, these nodes here in Node Red. And um, what I have up until now is I want three. Me I have three method methods. I want to um, generate maximum values, minimum values, and the last values for any particular day, and store that in this aggregated uh, table. Um, so I'm using three inject nodes and each of them execute 3 a.m. in the morning, actually 3 a.m., 3.01 and 3.02. And um, what I'm doing is um, I get the current date and time, I extract one day, so I always go back to the previous day, and I'm calculating the from day and the end day, uh, sorry, from date and the end date, and the from date is, um, so the previous day, zero hour zero minute zero second zero millisecond and the end date is the same day 24 59 59 999 um actually i think it should be 9999 because it's uh, one thousandth of a second what then is this anyway um and because it's running every day 3 a.m it should be 
you know, calculating the aggregated values for the previous day. And what I'm doing here is select the device sensor max value as value from sensor data. So I want um, to get um, information from my sensor data and I want to calculate the max values. Um, and in the very close, I'm setting the epoch should be greater or equals to from date and less than equals to end date. So it's basically the entire previous day. And, uh, and I'm listing all the sensor values that I want to uh, calculate the maximum of. So I want the maximum of temperature, power, and the moisture. And you might think that um, this is all nice, but I'm not really defining the device here. And um, because I'm grouping by sensor, I can't really you know, use the device in here, or at least it's not going to be a single select. But um, I realized that it doesn't really matter what type of temperature I'm, I'm measuring. You know, usually for temperature type values, I want to store the maximums. So um, filtering on or selecting on uh, the, the sensor field is enough for me. And I'm grouping by sensor because obviously I want the max of them. Um, and this goes into the database node and the output, I'm going to process the output and um, the, <coughs> the output is going to be an array and, um, uh, and also uh, because, and it will, you know, this select is going to uh, return me multiple items. Uh, so each item in the array is going to be one record, uh, one yeah one record from the database with the max values. So for each of them, I want um, I'm creating an insert command. So I insert those aggregated values into the um, uh, aggregated table, and I'm using this uh, command which is insert or replace into. Um, so I think in normal operation the replace should not happen, but if um, if I'm going to reuse this code to, you know, recalculate some of the past values, then at least using the replace um, is um, going to ensure that the insert doesn't fail if the value already exists, it's just going to override it. So I'm going to insert in the sensor aggregate table, inserting the epoch device sensor and value. And um, uh, the, the value is the from date. So again here, oops, so here in the from date, I calculate the previous day and I set to 000. zero, zero. So uh, all my aggregated timestamps is a particular day midnight. The the value, sorry, the, um, the device is the device, the sensor is the sensor, which I'm getting back from the select. And what I'm doing here is um, instead of putting the sensor, I'm putting sensor underscore max. So um, I'm adding a suffix to the um the sensor value and the uh, and the actual max value is again i'm getting getting it from the select and the reason i can um reference this as dot value is because in the select i'm using this as value so it's not coming through as you know like this in the result but it's coming through as the value so it's standard sql stuff so I'm creating a, um, a replace, uh, sorry, an insert for every single max value, and I'm just putting the same thing into the another database node. And by the way, at the database node, all you are doing is you're defining your file uh, for your database. And I'm doing the same for the min. So the min is exactly the same. The only difference is the function, which is the min. And so it creates the inserts and then it goes into the database. And the last one is um, is getting the getting the last values, and it is slightly uh, diffi uh, slightly different because I'm using the this function here. So um, uh, for whenever I want the last values, I have to create a select um, statement for every single sensor, and I'm using the order by ID. Uh, descending limit one so it's going to return me the the only one record with the highest id which is uh, obviously the latest and i'm using the same filter for you know start date and end date so in 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 and of course 
uh, the device and the and the sensor values also as filters in the very close. So I decided to get the last values for the today, which is the generation for today, uh, because that's all uh, the the inverter auto increments that value and it resets to zero every every morning. And also for the moisture, I said I just want the last moisture level. So if I um, let's say water in the morning and it starts dropping back, all I'm re really interested in is what what is the last value, not the maximum value. Um. So in in my case, I'm um, I'm you know pushing two selects into the uh, into the SQL node. Again, I will get um, uh, um, oh I'm only getting one value back, and um, I'm using the same thing. So I'm either using an insert or replace into blah blah blah, and and the same same process as before. The reason I'm 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 not using I don't need the the array here because um, I'm pushing two um, selects uh, into here and each of the select is going to return only one value uh, one record because obviously I'm using the limit one here and each of the select statement is going to generate one output or one uh, message one payload at the at the end so uh, this particular one is actually going to execute be executed twice and uh, uh, this is why I'm just using the payload zero because I'm only going to get one object uh, in the uh, in the payload and as usual um, I'm pushing all the selects into this uh, database comments and sorry if I go back to SQLite and if I um, list the values you can see that the maximum and the minimum values are getting calculated um, correctly so for if if i look at my solar panels from the po uh, from the power i want the max and from today i'm getting the last value so there's no like last suffix maybe i should have i should have added and you can see again the moisture is this is the last value but hey i'm getting moisture max as well uh, and uh, yeah power max temperature max battery minimum temperature minimum today blah 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 so you're getting all these values uh, automatically created in the system every single day on my home screen or um, on whatever screen my, I have my sensors I usually have a single um, you know a simple chart for every single value uh, that I'm displaying but I wanted a way um, like a more comprehensive way to display values from different sensors on one single chart when I can also update uh, the period that I want to view. And because this is all stored, st stored in a database, I can easily re uh, restore these values in the database. And this is what I have done in a separate tab, uh, which I call reports. And one of the main reasons to put it in a separate tab so I can have more uh, s uh, space on the screen. So I've created a report here, which, um, and I'm, sorry, a chart here. And I'm using this uh, chart to display any values that I want based on this selection here. I mean, it's quite rudimentary at the moment, so probably this is going to change because I don't really like the look and feel of it. But still, it can I can uh, demonstrate you the uh, uh, the basics. So I select a period and I select a uh, a data source and I click on submit, and the chart is updated based on. Um, those data which is being retrieved from the database and if I want to select the the same temperature for yesterday it's obviously it's a little bit different and if I want to do it for the week then you get a lot more values um, so this is all nice but what it can also do and what the chart uh, component can also do by standard that you can also push multiple uh, data points to it so um, hmm, maybe I do this too so you see that, um, and I left the, the chart to auto scale automatically. So this is why the values are going up and down. But um, what you can see here is now we are getting the temperature and the moisture on the same graph as well. And actually, if I really want to go over the top with the longest period and all the values, then I can do that as well. The only difference is the, uh, 
let me pick this point yeah so the sine light has a really high value so that is making all the other values look really really small and it's really hard to see it on the screen but again it's mostly a proof of proof of concept um it would be really useful if we if i would have like you know five six different temperature values and i can see them on the same plot because they would you know show up nicely they wouldn't be skewed by any um really high numbers um the logic for this is really, really specific so i don't really want to explain in a great detail what i have done is i'm using this uh, ui form to say um to define the periods that i want the report to show and in the name for all these checkboxes i'm using like period today period yesterday period slash week uh, so i'm i have like a keyword and a value separated by slash and for data points i'm using the same so in 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 the name i'm using the device slash uh, value or sorry device slash sensor um, um, to to describe what is it that i want to get later on because uh, when i do the submit all i'm getting back from the form is basically this i'm, I'm getting back from the names and uh, in this sequel um, I'm trying to construct the uh, the report based on based on these values that I'm getting from the form. Um, so in the loop, I'm just going through all the um, uh, the objects that I'm um, I'm coming I'm getting in the payload. So and these are actually attributes that I'm getting getting in the payload. And so if I check whether these are periods and based on whether it's today, yesterday, or a week, I'm standing I'm setting the from and the end date accordingly. And um, if it's not a period, then um, I construct a select statement based on the incoming values. So I said, said select start from the sensor data where device is uh, is basically parts zero is the um, is the string before the slash and the sensor is the string after the slash, and the date is you know from date end date. So for every single one of them, which uh, got selected on the form, I'm generating a select statement out of it. And I'm using this particular one to set the last, um, add an additional parameter, which is the complete equals true, to the last select statement uh, in this array. And I'm pushing the array out and uh, feeding that into the SQL node as usual. I think I'm going to finish uh, here for the first video on this series. Um, the only additional things I wanted to add is I've also added this re reset chart functionality, um, which is at, at the moment is working from an inject node, but if you are pushing an empty payload, an empty array in a payload uh, to the chart, then it resets the chart. Well, it just deletes everything from the chart. Um, so that can be a nice way of getting rid of the data, which is uh, displayed here because, well, especially on this one, I've selected, I don't know how many data points for an entire week. Uh, so that can be a lot of data. And um, so I will uh, continue this topic in the next video. My kids are up, so probably you can hear in the background. That should be the sign for me to stop. So thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful and definitely see you in the next video.